Hello everyone, Ember here. Welcome to today's video, and we're going to be taking a look at some new reveals from Starbirth. So Starbirth is part of our Brilliant Star set, which we'll be releasing in February. So quite a way off, but still worth taking a look and seeing what's going on. And we are stuck with Mew V Max being top dog, I think, until February comes out. So it's kind of worth seeing just what's on the horizon, basically. So Without further ado, we have some interesting reveals, including new V-Star in the form of Shaman, a Lumion V, which is extremely interesting, I'm probably pronouncing that really bad, Sinnoh Starters, in the form of some interesting Stage 2s to look at, and then there is a Cynthia, Cynthia card at the end, which is unfortunately not the same Cynthia from Ultra Prism, but a decent Cynthia nonetheless. So getting into the stuff, we have Turtwig, not really doing anything at all, Grotel, so Grotel is pretty interesting, it has the ability Sunlit Shell. It says once during your turn you may search your deck for grass Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So some people might be familiar with a Grovile way back in the day. I think it was Grovile? Yeah, Grovile from one of the earlier Sun and Moon sets. The just the set basically had the same ability and it was really good. Will this ability make this this card good on its own? I don't think so, to be honest. It's just a nice, helpful boost that this, the deck probably would want. But um, having 100 HP is also pretty awkward, so you can't just level ball for it. But either way, it's a pretty good ability. Then we have Totara, which has 190 HP. It's pretty on tanky on the high end. And it has the attack Overpress. So the, the Grass Collis does 50 damage for each of your evolution Pokemon in play. So obviously there is Inteleon. That's probably the most obvious one that comes to mind. Although I have seen someone suggest in a comment section that maybe you could include Cherim. So... For example, you swap out the consistency of Inteleon to try and play it with Charm, and you just kind of play a bit of, well, not really meme deck, but you kind of have a bunch of Cherubies and Charms, and you, that's how you, like, attach your Grass Energy to use Overpress. I think it's an okay attack. It's not that great, though, because you need at least four Evolution Pokemon in play to be doing 200 damage, which is the threshold, really, for getting two kills on all the VMAX. So I don't think it's particularly great, but it does have a lot of HP, so I could be wrong about Totera. Shaman V. It's a really interesting card. It's definitely one of those deck cards that could fit into sort of a Raihan Aurora Box Ditto style thing, is what I would say the most. Maybe even Leafeon if you're playing Raihan in Talion. But Shaman V, pretty good card. Wing Flap, really not doing anything. But the Revenge Burst attack for a Grass Colors does 60 damage and then 40 more for each prize card your opponent has taken. So if they've taken just one prize card, you'll be doing 100 damage. If you've taken two prize cards, it does 140. Three prize cards, does 180. Four prize cards, 220. Five, pri five prize cards, 260. So roughly, if they've just taken out a VMAX, then you could hit for 180. It's, it's not too bad, honestly. It's pretty easy to set up as well. You just really need a Raihan and a Grass Energy, and you're good to go. Um, the main problem with Shaman V, though, is it's kind of an evolving V, and the V star kind of outclasses it. So, Shaman V-Star, worth noting, has 250 HP, which is rather on the low end. You know, this is almost the same HP as Zacian. But at least you only give up two prize cards. That's the great thing about V-Stars. So, the attack Revenge Burst, for same, essentially the same attack, but Grass Colors does 120 this time, and then 40 more for each prize card your opponent has already taken. So, these maps are just infinitely better, right? So, one prize card... You're doing 160. If you're taking two prize cards, you're doing 200. Three prize cards, 240. Four prize cards, 280. Five prize cards, 320. And in a V-Star meta where all the two prizes will, will exist, basically only two prizes will become the thing, hopefully when V-Stars roll around. So then that means stuff like four prize cards actually does matter quite a lot because you could force your opponent to try and knock out maybe two V-Stars before this or two V-Pokemon. And then you can hit for 280. Or, you know, even if after your opponent just takes one prize card, you're already doing 160, which is still a 2 a kill almost VMAX. So maybe you just play this like a slow burn deck with loads of crushing hammers and healing items. That could be quite interesting to try out, especially considering the V star power called Star Bloom, which says, You may use this ability during your turn. Heal 120 damage from each of your grass Pokemon. I thought originally this just said Shaman. I was like, Oh my gosh, this, this is terrible V star power. But it's just each of your grass Pokemon. So maybe you just play this with Leafeon. Like maybe you do just play this in a Leafeon deck. And you just play it with Leafeon, Inteleon, Raihan, all the goodies. And then 
if you really want to, you could maybe try it out with Orbital or maybe on its own, like I suggested earlier, as a Crushing Hammer healing style deck. But either way, I think this V-Star is actually pretty good. Um, the HP is a little worrying, just a little bit worrying. But overall, I think it's I think it's a really solid card. So moving on to Chimchar, really cute artwork, but not much going on in the Ember trademark style attack. We have Monferno, again, really nice artwork, but unfortunately not doing anything. At least it has the ADHP, unlike the, um, what's it called? Grottle. So unlike Grottle, you can search this guy out with Level Ball, which is a massive help. Infernape. So we've got another one of these style attacks. I'm I'm a sucker for these moves. Ever since Gyarados was printed, and I guess way back, Typhlosion. If anyone's familiar with Typhlosion from Breakthrough, I think it was. These attacks are just really fun to me. I, I love these moves. And Infernape is a cool monkey as well. So, Fire Vortex for one energy, which is pretty important because it's stage two, does 80 damage. And you have to reveal the top five cards of your deck. And you do 80 for each energy revealed in this way. Then you have to discard the energy and shuffle the other cards back in. So, the reason why this is pretty interesting for starters is because you're shuffling back in the non energy. So, and what that essentially means is with the other attacks like Sandaconda, right? You discard the top six cards of your deck and you do 60 for each one. We all know Sandaconda. But with Sandaconda is you don't shuffle anything back in. You just discard everything. What this is saying is all those red candies and infernapes that you reveal, yeah, they're, they're not energy, but you at least get to shuffle them back in. So as long as you can shuffle back in your trainers and monkeys, then you should be able to basically find your next Infernape and then shuffle the energy back in with Energy Recycler or something like that. And then you can just do Fire Vortex again. So what are the numbers like? If you only reveal one energy, then you, you're only going to do 80 damage. That sucks. Two energy is 160, which is the, th the threshold for two kills. Three energy does 240. Four energy revealed is 320, which is very important. And then all five energy, say they're all five energy, which is highly unlikely, but let's just say they are. It does 400 damage. So, is this card good? Maybe not, because there's no draw engine for this card. What, what like, Typhlosion had? Typhlosion had Talonflame, which was really good. Inferno doesn't really have anything right now. I guess it has Mew. But apart from Mew, it really doesn't have a whole lot to work with. But, um, who knows? Maybe this could be okay. So, Piplup, very cute artwork. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that um, being one for RNG is, is also really good. 160 for 2 is just a nice guarantee of getting the 2 a kill if you've already hit them for at least 240 or 160, perhaps. So it's just worth noting. Then we have Piplup, which is a very cute artwork again. Then we have Priplup, just falling into the 90 HP range. And then we have Empoleon. Big fan of Empoleon cards, and I'm happy to see it begging, getting some more love. So Empoleon has the ability Emergency Ascend. Once you're in your turn, if this card is in your disco pile and you have no cards in your hand, you can play this card onto your bench and draw three cards. Is this a draw engine? Mm, not really. But if we think about the fact that we should be getting an Ultra Ball reprint pretty soon, either in this set or the set afterwards, and then of course there was that Totara that revealed earlier, so you can try and put a, maybe a bunch of Napoleons on the bench and use that as your kind of pseudo draw engine, I guess, for Totara. That sounds awfully awkward, especially since Torterra needs two energy, and there's probably just better applications for this, but maybe in a Donk deck, I guess. Just kind of sucks <laughs> if that's the case. But um, either way, Sympoleon's got an interesting ability. Unfortunately, the ability, because the ability is cool, they gave it a really lame attack. Water Arrow does 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Don't apply weakness or resistance. Um, even with a, a Goggles or a Psymium, well, I can't use Psymium because you're not Rapid Strike, but even with the Goggles, you're only doing 90 damage to a V. That's, yeah, you're two-shotting Crobat, you're two-shotting Lumion V, which we're about to look at, which is really good. But I don't see this being very prevalent at all. Maybe in a Roar Box deck, you could occasionally use Water Arrow, but I'm, I'm spending too much time on attack that's basically really mediocre, is what I'm trying to say. So Empoleon, pretty interesting, but um, we'll have to see if it's actually any good. So Lumion V, on the other hand, Lumion V, oh my days, so it has the ability Luminous Sign. When you play this Pokemon from your hand your bench during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. And then, of course, just shuffle your deck. For those of you who are around during the early days of Sun and Moon, particularly the first four sets, which is when it came out, you'll remember a card called Tabulele. And Tabulele was worth a bomb. 
And that was because Tapu Lele was in every single deck as like a two of, a three of, and in very rare cases, a four of, and people who were really scared of Tapu Lele. So, yeah, this card is really good. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this card, actually. I originally had like a, an entire paragraph to spew about why this will see play, but I think it's, it's pretty self explanatory. This makes um, just being able to find that Marnie, that research, that judge, going second, all that much better, all that bit better, I should say. So maybe going second does take over from going first that bit, that bit much more. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Pokemon, say, just hold their hands up and say, you know what, maybe we should change the first turn supporter rule, <laughs> because I'm not sure how balanced this card is in a way. If we factor in, you can just quick ball for this guy, or great ball for it, or ultra ball potentially for it. And all every deck will be running four ultra ball, four quick ball kind of split. So I'm not sure. This probably won't replace Intalion. It will kind of be side by side with Intalion. That's how I imagine it. So you leave a play, maybe one of these in your Intalion build, or maybe you don't play any Intalion and you just play one or the other, perhaps. But either way, I think this is easily a great card and we'll see a ton of play. So Cynthia's Aspiration as a supporter card. That's okay. It's not terribly great. Draw cards until you have five in your hand. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, draw until you have eight instead. So, I don't hate this card. I think it could be worth testing out with something like Malamar that naturally wants to build up a bigger hand size. Maybe just in a one prize deck in general. But I've, I found with one prizes that um, Bruno, even Karina, is actually pretty good. Zinnia is okay as well. Copycat is somewhat decent against Zashin decks, and then, of course, Zashin and Shadow Rider. And then, of course, you just have Research, so I'm not sure where Cindy's Aspiration really fits into all that. But if this, this could end up being proven to be just a better Bruno, but I'm not sure yet. So maybe Bruno should have been shuffling draw 8, but who knows. Cindy's Aspiration seems pretty good. So the main, th main thing to take away from today's video, guys, is Lumion V is Tapu Lele in disguise, and this will be an amazing busted card, mark my words. And Polyon is interesting, just nothing groundbreaking, I don't think. If it had been draw four cards, I'd been maybe a bit more interested, but it's nothing groundbreaking right now. And Fronape is a good meme. <laughs> It'll always be a good meme. And then Shaman V-Star, I think it's actually pretty good with the healing kind of tanking aspect, even though you only have 250 HP. Can't believe I, I said you only have 250 HP, but that's the harsh world we live in. So Tara is also interesting along with its evolution, but it won't do anything special with that energy cost and the fact that you're a stage two. With all that said, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think Lumion V will see a ton of play? Do you think... Shaman V-Star will do anything compared to Arcus V-Star and Charizard V-Star. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, let me know. Just, um, yeah, just let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully.